Hi. In this video, we're going to talk about finding the image of a set under a complex function. Many times in complex analysis, we concern ourselves with questions of the form asking for the image of a set under a function. For instance, we may take the function f of z equals z squared, take the set s consisting of the points inside and on the square with side length 2 centered at the origin, and ask to which points in the w plane do the points in S map? Now, in the picture we've drawn, uh, the, the set S along with some specific points in some specific regions, and we've shown sort of the color-coded version of, uh, of the image. But the question is, how did we come up with this picture? How can we eff effectively and efficiently figure out what these images look like? Now, you may find that uh, the text we're using doesn't have a very detailed, very explicit procedure for doing this. And that's a, very, that's a very common thing you'll find in other textbooks. And there is a very good reason. And the reason is that there is no one procedure that is best for sketching the image of a particular set. Um, a lot will depend on the function. A lot will depend on the set itself. And so it, uh, it's not surprising that you would, won't find very detailed, explicit steps carefully laid out. We will talk about one technique that often is useful. Um, but you should be aware that there will be many others you will run into if you read any other uh, texts or, or look at other people's work. One other thing we'll make you aware of before we, uh, we carry on is that you can always use points, individual points, to help you decide what an image looks like. For instance, I might take, um, in determining what the image of this looks like, I might take the corners, I might take specific points inside the set, and put them into the function f of z and plot where they end up. Now if I plot enough points, I will get a, you know, a more or less adequate idea of what the image looks like. Now that will be very tedious and, and not very elegant, so we will talk about another uh, technique to use. What we'll describe next is finding the image of our set by looking at the boundaries. Your set s that you're mapping has a boundary and by taking these points on the boundary and seeing where they map to we will often find the boundary of our image and that will help us obviously in, in finding out what the image looks like. Now in a bit more detail what we do is the following. We're going to take the boundary of our set S in the z-plane we're going to write the boundary uh, parametrically so as if we were tracing over the boundary through time. Now usually we, uh, instead of keeping it as z of t, we'll break it up into a parametric description of the real part and of the imaginary part. Or if it's more convenient, we can write the uh, modulus and the argument in terms of our parametric variable t. Our parametric description will often come with bounds on t, inequalities saying the, uh, the lowest and the largest values allowed for t. We'll also take a look at the function f of z and put it in a convenient form. We can either break it up into its real and imaginary parts, or occasionally it will be more convenient to write f of z in terms of its modulus and argument in, in polar form. What we'll do is take the boundary uh, description, the parametric description of the boundary, and feed it into the function f. And what that will do is produce um, a parametric description hopefully, of the boundary of the image in the W plane. Now, at this point, you may be wondering how we know that the boundary of S will get mapped to the boundary of the image. And that is a very good question. It's the kind of question complex analysis concerns itself with. We haven't said why that should be up to this point in, in the course. But we uh, will often see that that is the case. Um, for the kinds of functions that we deal with in this course and the kinds of sets, it will usually be the case that the boundary of S gets mapped to the boundary of the image. And so focusing on that boundary will be a good thing to do in sketching the image of a set. Now, once we've plotted the boundary in the W plane, it will divide the W plane into one or two or more regions, rather. And we need to know which of the regions in the W plane actually contain the images of the points in S. Is it the inside of our boundary? Is it the outside? Of... Now, to answer this question, Plugging some test points into the function f and plotting those in the w-plane will help us decide which are the correct regions. 
In the next video, we'll see an example of these steps in action. Uh, we'll look at a specific function and a specific set and see how to apply these steps.